Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we're going to be exploring some of the updates made to Pop OS 20.04 by taking a look at the beta version available to us now and comparing and contrasting some of the new features in comparison to 19.10. I have both 20.04, which is in front of me here, and 19.10 installed. We're on the lockout screen, so we can easily reference both, but I'm excited about some of the new changes that have been made with 20.04. First change I've noticed is the background of actually here of the lockout screen. You can see that this is 1910 where they have a default picture in the background versus the 2004 version where they have a blurred background of whatever desktop image that you have. So let's go ahead and log in to 2004. And of course the desktop got updated, but what's more interesting is that they offer a nice dark theme for the entire desktop environment that you can select right after you are done with the install process during the a welcome page being displayed, which is new. And it's hard to notice, but up at the top, their bar is now a black color versus what they had was more of a grayed tone. So it does make things stick out just a little bit better since the font has a little gray tint and as soon as you roll over it, you see it turn white. As far as the install process goes, it's very similar in both. Not much has changed between 2004 and 1910. They did change the color scheme up just a little bit and they made it the a darker scheme so you'll see dialogues being displayed with the dark scheme. But as far as unpacking and installing everything, the time it takes to do the install hasn't really seemed any kind of an increase or decrease of time at that. So one thing I want to show you is just how things look with the new darker theme. And if I went ahead and opened up a file browser here, you can see how dark it is in the backgrounds of the dialog boxes. I personally like the look of this because we can really easily see all the nice contrasting colors versus how it was in the 1910 version, as you can see here. If you're new and stopping by to watch a video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for future videos. And if we open up a terminal, let's go ahead and check out how that looks real quick. Here's the terminal. I believe it looks just about the same. The input text is still white and the user and the host name are in green here. And in 1910, it's very much the same, but what we do see is a little bit of a different color being used in the background, as well as on the top bar here, just a little bit darker, mainly with the darker theme, but it does give it a more cohesive feel going in between the top bar and the actual terminal here. But not much else has changed besides the theme a little bit there. If we click on activities, you can see that everything is just about the same with on the right hand side, you still have the various different workspaces that you're working on. You can always type in the middle up top and search for any applications that you have. If you click on the nine dots here, that shows us all of our applications for Pop OS. And if we go between the two default application setups, you can see that they're still the same. One thing I will launch is the Pop Shop where they've made a slight change between 1910, which is what we're looking at, and 2004. Really all the categories have stayed the same here in 2004, as you can scroll through the various different types, such as games, internet, math, science and engineering, finance, development, whatever you, whatever category that you're interested in and where you wanna grab your applications from. And one significant change that they have made between the 2004 and 1910 version in their pop shop is the fact that you can now get flat pack applications from Flathub. So if we search for something like, uh, let's see, Visual Studio Code comes to mind. Let's see if we can find it in here now. And I did find it, but the search bar didn't do me so great because it gave me a whole other bunch of options, which I really didn't need to look at. But here, if we do Visual Studio Code, you can see that you can get from the dev repo or you can get it from the Flat Hub flat pack. So now you have this nice drop down where you can go ahead and switch between where you want to get your applications from. Whereas in 1910, you really don't have that option. Let's just look up the same package here just to show you the difference. And you can see here that Visual Studio Code is only available from the dev package repository. That's all good. If we click on this little cog for our settings, you'll also notice a new tab for flat packs in 2004. And we'll do that real quick here in 2004 and check it out. Here it is. You see that now you have flat pack support and it says where your sources are coming into for the pop shop for flat packs. You can also add more or delete the ones that are currently here. By default, they're using Flathub to get their flat packs, but that's mainly it for 
what they've changed up inside of their pop shop and how you get applications. If we go back to search, you can see that they did change up a little bit of the transitions here inside of the pop shop. Things seem to transition a little smoother and they swipe left to right or right to left as you search for certain things and exit in and out of windows. With 1910, it wasn't quite as smooth of a transition. Instead, it just reloaded the pages here and really had no transition at all. So they made that look a little smoother, at least in my opinion. If we exit out of here and out of the rest of these things that we have open, let's go ahead and check out another new thing that they've added, and that's the ability to tile windows. So let's actually open up a few windows. I'm gonna open up a terminal window as well as the pop shop and a file browser and why not mozilla firefox their default web browser as you can see here i currently have everything kind of just staggered around in the background mixing and matching and blending in with each other but with this new icon up here uh, for 2004 beta we are able to now tile windows so if i click that you can see how all my windows get tiled and we have little bits of gaps here of the desktop background. So we get a nice tiling manager available to us by default, making it a really nice layout for all your windows that are currently opened up. Of course, you can exit out of some of them and then other windows will go ahead and take their place. It's a really neat feature to have, as well as being able to show active hints, which just highlights where you're currently on. So if I click around my applications, I can tell very clearly in this orange peach color that I currently have it selected and it's in focus. So we'll turn that off for now and just mess with the gap here. So you can also change the gap around so you have more space between your applications. You can see that all around these windows, we have the same gap, which is currently set to 16. The default I believe is uh, two, which uh, actually is plenty for me. That looks pretty nice. It gives it a decent amount of space between windows, but doesn't really affect the real estate on your monitor. Uh, one might be a little bit too close, but overall it's pretty nice. So you can always turn off your tile windows as well and then freely move your windows back around and at any time you can turn it back on and things should tile and you can of course rearrange your various windows in order to put them in the order that you like. Maybe you wanna see the terminal more on one side. You can of course make the terminal belong to just one side, whereas your other applications can exist side by side here as I have these three windows. And then finally with this new icon here, we also have the pop shell keyboard shortcuts. So let's go ahead and exit out of all these applications to put this back in focus here. Also another nice feature that they have here is launcher shortcut here, which is the activate launcher. So if we do super forward slash, we can instantly type in some sort of program that we wanna run just like terminal here and launch it. This is much like Spotlight in Mac OS. It's a great feature to have. I really like using it. And what super means is a key much like the Windows key that you would find on most keyboards. If you hit, uh, let's say the Windows key and forward slash, you would get this search bar. I do enjoy operating systems with these types of search bars. And in order to exit out of this launcher, we can go ahead and just press the escape key. It makes for a very easy launching of applications. It also allows you to switch applications is what it says. So we'll give that a shot real quick. And as you can see here, we do have those applications available to us that are currently opened up. So let's open up just a few more so we can kind of get the context of how that all works. So with a few opened up here, let me just close the tile windows. Let's move a few things around. And once I have tile windows shut off again, I can go ahead and easily search through whatever applications that I currently have running without actually alt tapping over and going through the applications. I can just go ahead and select one by changing which one I currently want open and just pressing enter. Of course, now you'll have to do that with your arrow keys. Instead of with your mouse, it doesn't seem to work with the mouse right now. Maybe in the future they'll go ahead and add that support, but it's a nice quick way to open up a application or go ahead and sift through the applications that you already have open. Again, you press escape in order to get out of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and get out of all of those applications. Just a few other small things I found. Some of the text here looks like it's just a little bit closer together, as well as we have rounded edges and a border around certain widgets here, just like the calendar and weather, as opposed in 1910, where unless you highlight it, you really don't have any kind of a border. And then on the far right hand side, you of course have your volume control, the wired or wireless connection, as well as settings, locking the computer and powering it off, logging out and restarting it as well, which has only changed slightly because in 1910, you had these little icons instead of 
a drop down where you get to select your option instead with 2004. And really the last thing I'm just gonna check out real quick just to see if there's been any changes in the amount of resources that are being used. I'm gonna run HTOP so we can take a look at that. Let me make this a little bigger. And as we can see here on the 2004 beta version, we have 1.29 gigs of memory being used. The CPU usage, I have uh, two cores here, is kind of fluctuating between 0.7% uh, and up to 4%. We have 114 tasks, 265 threads running, and of course, none of my swap is being used here. And let's go ahead and take a look and see at 1910 what the comparison is like in there. So we'll go ahead and make this a little larger as well. And we can see that here we're only running about 946 megabytes of memory currently with about 236 threads. And our two cores here are going between 0.7 and about uh, maybe 3.3, probably upwards of 4% as well. So very similar, minus the fact that there is a little bit more memory usage. Everything else seems to be the same. As you can tell, there definitely is a little bit more memory usage. What I'll do is exit out of here. And this really concludes the update of Pop! OS 2004. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of Pop! OS 2004, the beta version. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.